started from uh, always loving to sing and being involved in school recitals, and but never ever in a million years in my wildest dreams thinking that I would ever become a successful entertainer, which is like a dream. When I was a kid growing up, we had so little that everything was a dream. My first break came from a guy out of New York City who was in the publishing business. Uh, and I auditioned for him, and I sang a song called My Mother's Eyes. I was a big Nellie Lutcher fan growing up as a kid. And uh, he liked the way I sang, and he took me in the studio, recorded me, and we kind of had a little regional noise happen with the record. And that was really the beginning. A guy by the name of Paul Cap, whose brother uh, was the owner and president of Cap Records. We've always managed to find somebody who believed in what we were doing. You know, I, I can remember when uh, we recorded, uh, well, in the 70s, I, I had uh, uh, My Eyes of Georgia, which I had recorded originally for Motown Records. And when I left Motown, it was the only side that that we bought back. And I think it was taken to just about every record company in the business, turned down. All of a sudden came a guy named Larry Utah, who had a great ear for single records. And he says, that's my first hit for my new record company, which was called Private Stock in those days. And it was, I mean, it was... If it were from his lips to God's ears, and, and then from that came uh, swearing to God, then who loves you in December '63, and uh, at the end of the '70s, I, I had a big hit with, with Greece, which was phenomenal. A lot of the great moments were, you know, having hit records, but I, I think the greater moments were getting to know a lot of my fellow artists and touring with them and knowing them as, as people and, and not just as stars. Uh, everybody from Frank Sinatra to Sam Cooke and Jackie Wilson and Otis Reddy and Bobby Darren and guys like Jerry Butler and Little Richard and the Rascals. And I'm sure that there will be many names. I, I, We'd have to be here all night to get everybody in. But it just really has been great. I'm really happy to see that PBS has recognized the fact that there was a period of music uh, that just never does grow old. The fact of the matter is that oldie radio in every market in the world is either number one or number two. So that should tell, tell people something. And... And public radio has has been the forerunner as far as going out there and, and putting these kind of things together. Uh, from all indications that I get, this has done more for them than anything else they've ever had. Uh, and it's refreshing. It's also nice that it's giving a lot of really great artists an opportunity to get back out there and have people know that they are available and they are still alive and doing well. I could tell you that whenever we work in concert, it amazes me when I look out to the audience and the groupings and ages are vary anywhere from six years old to 65. So that's quite amazing when you can do something that can touch anybody from a six-year-old to a 60-year-old. You know, we live in a, in a day and age that's totally different from when I was growing up. And I can think back, and there are very few people who went from high school to college when I was a kid. It was high school to work, or not even finish high school and go to work. Uh, if I were to give any young kids advice, the first thing I would tell them is that it's really important to get a good education. It won't hurt you in any way to have this behind you. And you can certainly pursue uh, either an acting or, or a musical career. And if it doesn't happen, you'll at least have something else to fall back on.
So I think that's really important today. First of all, it's music, and it's melodic, and it's telling stories. Uh, a lot of them are about love and one-on-one -on -one situations. Uh, in comparison to a lot of the music you're hearing today, it's not talking about uh, bashing people or women or any of that kind of stuff. And more important than anything, I, I think melodically, it's the kind of music that's been written that will be here for as long as, as there are people to listen to it. 